On a typical summer afternoon, a bomb rocks downtown Oslo, Norway. The chaos that ensues forever changes this peaceful nation. People were just running as fast as they could and screaming. Eight lay dead. Little does anyone know, the killing is far from over. Just two hours later, on a picturesque island, the bomber continues his merciless attack. He went over to one of the people who was on the ground, and he shot him in the head. Hunting down and killing 69, attending summer camp. It was a bloody massacre. With never-before-seen footage and harrowing eyewitness accounts, this is the story of the deadliest day in Norwegian history and the extremists behind it all. A serene Friday afternoon in downtown Oslo. It seemed like a typical summer day, but within minutes, Norway would be forever changed. At about 3.30 p.m., a massive car bomb explodes outside the office of the Norwegian prime minister. Eight people are killed and scores are injured. The government district is in total chaos. To be honest, I thought it was Al-Qaeda. The blast is so strong, it blows out windows in a half mile radius. The once tranquil city now looks like a bombed out war zone. Many drept and many, or store ødeleggelser på bygninger. Så det er det er det største jeg har været med på. The terror is just beginning. About an hour and a half after the bombing, stage two of the attack is about to begin. The target, the tiny island of Utøya, 20 miles from Oslo, where 600 young people from Norway's ruling Labour Party are enjoying a summer retreat. Within minutes, this idyllic setting will turn into something out of a horror movie. A colleague tell me uh, there's a policeman coming. Four, five, six people gathered around him. And then I see he pulls out his gun and shoots every single one from close range, from point blank actually. For the next 90 minutes, the shooter systematically stalks and guns down anyone in his sights. When the shooting got closer, we were like, it's only a question left, how would we, love, how would we like to die? Would we like to get shot or would we like to drown? And that was when Mati and I was like, okay, we would rather drown. It was a bloody massacre. He did it calm, slowly and brutal. Police arrive to a scene of utter carnage, with 69 dead bodies strewn across the island. And when they close in on the gunman, they're in for a shock. He isn't an Al-Qaeda operative. He's a 32-year-old Norwegian citizen named Anders Bering Brevik. As he's arrested, the whole world is clamoring to know who is this man and why did he do it? Brevik was born in 1979 the son of a nurse and a diplomat who left the family when Anders was a baby. Except for the divorce, he had a normal middle-class upbringing. In his 20s, some say Brevik aspired to be a model. It's rumored he even had plastic surgery in the US to perfect his facial features. We could describe and label him in a variety of ways, um, including, it seems to me, to be uh, a narcissist, uh, somebody who's paranoid, somebody who is desperately seeking attention. He's wanting to draw attention to himself. Into his late 20s, Brevik's interests turned to politics, and at age 30, he began writing a rambling 1,500-page manifesto, which he calls the European Declaration of Independence. It's his blueprint for a ruthless terror campaign for a Muslim-free Europe. The manifesto is set in three different books and basically claims that uh, Europe has been overrun by immigration, particularly um, Muslim immigrants, 
Brevik is quite Islamophobic, xenophobic, racist. He clearly wants to reclaim, as he sees it, Europe for Christianity. Brevik claims it is his mission to cleanse Norway and Europe of all Muslims and punish those politicians who encourage multiculturalism, specifically the Labour Party. And slowly but surely, he begins to formulate a master plan. In his manifesto, Brevik divides his mission into four stages. First, he creates false credentials to raise and then spend 140,000 euros on his terror operation. Then he will buy all the necessary equipment and materials over a long period of time to avoid suspicion. Nearing D-Day, he'll spend no longer than a week preparing the bomb and ammunition to minimize the risk of being caught. And finally, Brevik will put the attack into motion. Here he adds a note to self, good luck and give them hell. Between 2008 and 2011, Brevik legally purchases a Ruger Mini-14 semi-automatic rifle and a Glock 17 pistol. He also obtains a police uniform and hollow point bullets. Online, he finds the instructions he needs for building a car bomb. To make that device, which could comprise, you know, more than a ton of explosives, um, you need a lot of, uh, first, of first of all, you need a lot of uh, uh, material for that, for example, fertilizer and the additional materials, but also you need the facilities to be able to mix the explosives in the right quantities. So, at the beginning of May 2011, 82 days before the attacks, Brevik moves into a remote farmhouse near the town of Orsta, a hundred miles north of Oslo. Here, Brevik can quietly finish his manifesto, hide his cache of weapons, and build his bomb. Posing as a would-be farmer, he rouses no suspicions. Just a regular guy. He was not, not nervous, just polite and normal like Norwegians are usually. <laughs> if they only knew, the man next door was planning to slaughter dozens of people in a single afternoon. Brevik writes, I continue to search for methods of purifying the bomb. Failure is not an option. The day before the attacks, Brevik travels to Oslo for his final recon mission. At 1.30 p.m., a cab picks him up from the train station near Orsta and takes him back home. And when we came to the farm, I see this little little van, and it was uh, parked in the like in the front uh, like this. And uh, maybe it was very maybe it had a bomb in this car too, uh, maybe because it, was, it looks heavy that car. Preparations are complete. The bomb is primed. Tomorrow, the killings begin. On the morning of July 22nd, 2011, Anders Brevik is about to put his manifesto into action, bombing and shooting his way to infamy. This is the beginning of Brevik seeing this martyrdom coming into fruition. He knows he's taking steps that are going to lead to a particular conclusion that he's thought very carefully about, that he's been planning for a long period of time. At 10 a.m., Brevik logs onto his computer and uploads an anti-Islamic video onto YouTube. <laughs> 